Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. People are in Marvel, summon Yi Fu at the beginning. Chapter 1. In front of the computer screen, Ji Zhang was flipping through page after page of important information about the world. Looking at the familiar figures on the screen, Ji Zhang's expression gradually became extremely exciting. Tony Stark revealed his identity, he is Iron Man. The United States Captain Steve Rogers is back. Alien fleet invades New York. Superheroes team up to save the world. Looking at the hot news headlines one after another in recent years, Ji Zhang finally only had a numb look on his face. That iron can flying in the sky must be Iron Man. The one holding a hammer and discharging electricity everywhere should be Thor, the hammer god. I really traveled to the Marvel world. He didn't look good at the moment. After all, this was a veritable high-risk world. Not to mention that in a few years the purple sweet potato spirit will snap his fingers to forcibly wipe out half of the lives, even ordinary people may accidentally get involved in the battle between superheroes and super criminals and die suddenly on the spot. After all, people will only remember the hero's victory over evil. Who cares how many innocent lives died behind it? Therefore, in this world where the rich rely on technology and the poor rely on mutation, only strength is the greatest security. The surprise brought by time travel was lost in the threat of death at any time, and Ji Zhang began to miss the busy life he once had. After all, although I was tired at that time, at least there was no life threat. Unlike this Marvel world, there are freaks everywhere, and if he is not careful, he may die on the spot. After venting his emotions, Ji Zhang gradually calmed down. The matter has come to this, no matter how much he resists, it will be of no avail. It is better to calm down, think carefully, and find ways to make himself stronger. The poor rely on mutation, and the rich rely on technology, but I'm not a rich man, and I don't have the incredible luck of those protagonists. Neither of these two methods is within my reach, so. Ji Zong's expression moved slightly. He thought of the mysterious magician, Ancient One. Can I go to the Ancient One and learn the magic of Kamar Taj? Just as Ji Zong's heart was surging with various emotions, a crisp mechanical synthesis sound suddenly sounded in his mind. Ding! It is detected that the host's inner emotions have reached full value, and the monster summoning system is officially activated. Ji Zong's eyes suddenly lit up. System. It seems that this is the guarantee for my future survival. Just as he was about to ask something, a blue light curtain appeared directly in front of his eyes. Host. Ji Zhang. Race. Human. Strength not popular. Special ability none. Shocking point zero points. Available props none. Looking at his bare panel, Ji Zhang felt a little embarrassed. He coughed twice and said, System, please introduce your function. The host can summon monsters through this system to obtain shock points. Shock points can be used to exchange for more powerful monsters or to exchange for abilities in the system store. After hearing the introduction of the system, Ji Zhang was moved and immediately asked, What monster can I summon now? The current inventory of monsters is zero, the shock points are zero, and no monsters can be summoned. Ji Zhang was stunned for a moment, and then he couldn't help but cursed in his heart, isn't this an endless cycle? You can't get shock points without monsters, and you can't summon monsters without shock points. In anger, he remembered a joke he had seen. What should I do if I can't defeat the monster? Then you go upgrade. But you can only upgrade by killing monsters. Then go fight the monsters. But I can't beat the monster. Then you go upgrade. Quote dot 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 quote. Now his situation seems to be not much different from the situation in this joke. System, don't you have any initial gift package or something like that? After calming down, Ji Zhang tentatively asked the system. This system does not load any program settings related to the initial gift package. The system's answer made Ji Zhang completely give up. He slumped down on the sofa, his heart filled with despair after his hope was shattered. MDZZ, how can I get shock points without the initial gift pack? Do you want me to pretend to be a monster and then be shot dead in the street by the beautiful country police? And this is the Marvel world. Maybe I will be killed by those superheroes who claim to be righteous without even needing the police. After hearing Ji Zong's accusation, the system was silent for a while. After calculating for a moment, the system spoke again. What the host said makes sense. 
In order to cope with the current situation, the system will issue a temporary task to the host. The host can advance the reward for this task. Before Ji Zhang could react, the system's sound sounded again. The mission has been issued, the miracle of the third planet. Mission Requirements To ensure that the Earth's civilization is not destroyed by complete life forms, it is required to retain at least 10% of the population and at least 20% of the industrial facilities. Task Reward 10,000 Shock Points, a random ability of level D or above a random monster of level E or above, and a random weakening ability of the monster Yefu. At this moment, the mechanical synthesis sound of the system is as wonderful as the sound of nature in Ji Zong's ears. He reacted immediately and said loudly, advance the task reward immediately. Hey, congratulations to the host for obtaining ability Kamaway, a special ability from the world of Naruto. It can transfer any object between reality and Kamui space. Ability rating, D. Congratulations to the host for getting the summoned monster, Gamora, a famous monster from the Ultraman series. It has extremely strong vitality, strong limbs and a very destructive long tail. It is also the first to defeat Ultraman. Monster, Strength Rating, D. Congratulations to the host for acquiring immortality, weakened version, the immortality comes from the completely living form Yifu. Even if it is weakened, it is enough to blur the boundaries between life and death for the holder. Ability Rating, SSSA. Although the abilities and monsters in the gift pack are both rated D by the system, Ji Zhang is very excited now. Kamui's elusive ability and nearly invincible virtualization are definitely extremely valuable skills for him as an ordinary person. Not to mention Gamora, as the first monster to truly defeat Ultraman, its strength cannot be underestimated. Even in this Marvel movie universe, it is definitely considered the overlord. Definitely, the most important reward in this reward is the regenerative healing factor from Yefu. Although this ability has been weakened by the system, it is still extremely powerful. In the Marvel world, as long as he doesn't encounter the complete Phoenix Force and the death super bosses, it is almost impossible for him to die. Moreover, this ability can also be strengthened by consuming shock points. After strengthening to the top level, he will gain the same immortality over death as Yifu. After recovering from the huge amounts of surprise, Ji Zhang calmed down. He did not summon the monster immediately, but carefully thought about his next course of action. I have to say that this task issued by the system is indeed very subtle. The completely living form Yefu, if, is an extremely powerful monster that appears in Ultraman Max. No, maybe it shouldn't be called a monster. In Ji Zong's view, Yifu is more like a rule that exists in the universe. If you treat it with kindness, it will treat you with kindness in return. If you treat it with violence, it will return even greater violence to you. It is like a mirror, returning everything intact. But it is immortal, so the violence it exerts is naturally far greater than the original perpetrator. However, although Yifu's ability is terrifying, as long as he doesn't attack it actively, everything will be fine. With Yifu's ability, it's enough to completely shake the world, so let's make a big fuss. Ji Zhang murmured to himself, then immediately stood up and started his actions. New York, Manhattan, the richest region in the United States and even the world is no longer as prosperous as it once was. Collapsed buildings, fleeing people, all of this creates a doomsday-like picture for the world. Sirens, wails, and the occasional ambulance sound come and go. Countless soldiers with live ammunition surrounded the place where the incident took place. Behind the soldiers, countless reporters swarmed up, holding high-definition cameras in their hands in an attempt to capture first-hand precious information. Viewers, we are now at the location where the New York incident occurred. As you can see from the picture, a huge amount of circular crater has been formed in the area hit by the falling object from space. A female reporter was loudly introducing the sudden accident to the audience in front of the TV and the internet. From the camera screen, a huge white sphere about several meters high can be vaguely seen. And around the white sphere, there is a huge amount of circular pit. The sunken ground and the surrounding scenes that were almost flattened all illustrate the huge destructive power caused by the falling white sphere. This is incredible. The experts invited by the TV station looked shocked when looking at the scene. If this is really the object that fell from the sky, it can never be so white. 
The heat generated by friction when entering the atmosphere from space should make this mysterious object appear burnt black. We have every reason to suspect that this object has been replaced by relevant departments. They are unwilling to let us know the truth. The expert's expression was angry and pitiful, as if he was sighing for something. The reporter who heard the expert's remarks asked again. Professor, are you saying that the federal government probably discovered something terrible and therefore deliberately replaced the fallen object? The expert nodded affirmatively. He knew that as long as he showed a questioning look at this time, he could win more recognition and popularity for himself in front of the audience. I strongly suspect that those guys who only take tax money and do nothing are deliberately hiding a huge secret. In the center of the blocked area, the world's famous richest man and superhero, Iron Man Tony Stark glanced disdainfully at the experts who talked endlessly on TV. J-A-R-V-I-S, turn down the sound, I don't want to hear that idiot talking while I'm doing research. Okay, Mr. Stark, a middle-aged man's voice from electronic synthesis replied. Then, the sound on the TV disappeared immediately. Stark, on the other hand, showed an exaggerated expression of relief. Finally, I don't have to hear that guy's crazy words anymore. But you have to admit that what he said makes some sense. Bruce Banner, who was also conducting inspections on the side, said, how did this big white ball pass through the atmosphere without leaving any traces? I think it might have come to Earth with a whoosh like Thor. Steve Rogers also expressed his opinion on the side. After hearing what this, old antique, said, Tony sighed helplessly. Upon seeing this, Steve immediately shrugged and explained, Please don't pay attention to what I said. I was just joking. After all, Thor was not burned by the atmosphere when he came to Earth. Can you be more serious about your work? This is no small matter. Maybe I need to tell you the casualty report of this accident. In the light screen next to the Avengers, a dark bald man said in a serious voice. The shockwave generated when this thing fell caused at least 50 people to die nearly a thousand people to be injured, and a large number of houses collapsed and damaged. What's more important is that this is Manhattan, and everyone who works here is undoubtedly an elite. Hearing the other party's words, Tony Stark sneered. The fact is that the combined value and wealth they can create cannot compare to me, but I am working here for their safety. Shouldn't they thank me? Tony's speech made Nick Fury's already dark face turn even darker. Tony, you. Just as he was about to say something, he was directly interrupted by Stark. Okay, the tests are almost done. I think you are more concerned about the test results than coming to argue with me, right? Nick Fury was choked up for a moment and had to bring the topic back on track. He asked, what on earth is that? Tony Stark clicked a few times on the light screen in the air and displayed a data table in front of everyone. Although I know you don't understand most things, but you can always understand two pieces of data, right? As he spoke, he pointed to the weight and density columns on the form. Just like the data given on this table, the weight of this white sphere is at least 32,000 tons, and its volume does not exceed 35 square meters. This exaggerated data shocked Nick Fury. This is impossible. This density is too exaggerated. But that's the truth. Tony shrugged. I really want to cut this guy open and see its internal structure. If the composition and structure of this strange substance could be figured out, it would obviously be of great benefit to his armor upgrade. I advise you not to do this. Suddenly, a strange male voice sounded next to his ears. Tony was startled and immediately looked in the direction of the sound. The figure of a handsome oriental man slowly emerged like waves of water. Hello Avengers. The man sat elegantly on the sofa he got from nowhere and greeted them with a smile. Who are you? Everyone was shocked and immediately looked at the man warily. Seeing the fighting postures of the Avengers, the Eastern man waved his hand indifferently. He said, Everyone, please relax. My name is Ji Zhang. I am just a messenger conveying a message. Messenger. I don't know any messenger who would break into a sealed secret area. Nick Fury said suspiciously. That may be because you are relatively ignorant. Ji Zhang smiled. Everyone was speechless for a moment. If even Nick Fury, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., is ignorant, then they really can't think of anyone who can be called well-informed. After a moment of silence, Nick Fury spoke again. Sir, since you said you are a messenger, what message do you want to convey to us? 
Nick Fury is worthy of being the famous King of Agents. He was going head to head with his opponent one moment, but ended up using the title Mr. the next second. The speed of the face change made the Avengers on the side a little surprised. Ji Zhang was not too surprised. He knew the Shield director somewhat. To be able to serve as the director of Shield, which is all undercover, for such a long time, and finally fake his own death to escape HYDRA's pursuit, such methods are certainly not ordinary people. Ji Zhang was thinking in his mind while looking at Avengers. The Battle of New York a year ago must have made you understand the threats that exist in the universe. But whether it is the invasion of Chidori or the arrival of IF, all this is just the beginning of the wave of destruction. Move your eyes underground, there are real dangers there. Finally, I solemnly advise you, please do not take any measures against this white object, don't say it's unforeseen. After saying this, the man's figure turned into waves and disappeared in front of the Avengers. Everyone was left looking at each other with surprise and doubt in their eyes. J-A-R-V-I-S, can you find out the identity of the man just now? Tony Stark asked the artificial intelligence with a solemn expression. All information on the opponent's face has been recorded and is being compared with the Global Human Information Database. It is expected to take 10 seconds. The sound of mechanical synthesis echoed in this makeshift research institute. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The information comparison is completed, and no human being similar to him have been found worldwide. After a pause, J-A-R-V-I-S continued to ask very conscientiously, do you need to continue searching for the name, Ji Zhang? Tony immediately waved his hand, indicating that it did not need to continue the inquiry. There is no similar facial information, and a casual name is obviously of little use. What do you think? Tony looked at the other Avengers. Hawkeye's voice was low, since there is no information about him on the Earth, isn't he the so-called alien? So he's the same guy who invaded New York a year ago? Steve asked. Hearing this, Nick Fury seemed to have remembered something, and his expression was slightly subtle. No, Captain, not all aliens have malicious intentions towards the Earth. There are also some races in the universe that have similar moral values to humans. Are you talking about Thor? Dr. Banner laughed. Yes, maybe the so-called Mr. Ji Zhang is also from the same divine race as R, point-breaking, star. Stark joked in an attempt to lighten the tense atmosphere among everyone. Dr. Banner continued what Tony said, looking at his obviously oriental appearance, he must be a god in oriental mythology. Bruce, it seems that you don't know much about eastern culture. You should call him an immortal, do you understand? Tony made an exaggerated gesture and joked. Listening to the two people's nonsense, the black widow on the side covered her head helplessly and said. Can you be more serious? Isn't it the tide of destruction that that person is talking about that we should pay more attention to? Tony spread his hands in embarrassment and explained. Well, well, I think figuring out the identity of the messenger might be helpful for our next actions. But what's more important is the threat in front of us, and the messenger also mentioned the underground in Houston. Maybe we should focus our attention there. Natasha Romanoff said. What threats could there be underground? Tony asked nonchalantly, could it be those rats burrowing? Tony, don't be careless. Steve reminded. Okay, okay, the genius Mr. Stark will go and see what Houston has to offer. As he spoke, he quickly clicked a few times on the projection screen in front of him, and then looked at the others. Okay, I have sent my unmanned armor to Houston as quickly as possible to conduct surveys. We will know the results in 20 minutes. Hey, congratulations on getting 100 summoning points from Tony Stark. Hey, congratulations on getting 100 summoning points from Bruce Banner. Hey, congratulations on getting 100 summoning points from Steve Rogers. Dot dot dot. A series of system notification sounds next to his ears made Ji Zhang narrow his eyes. It seems they have discovered Gamora. The man leaned back on the sofa comfortably and chuckled. Next, let the world experience the power of monsters. Dot dot dot. Asgard, the place where the Norse gods live. On the highest seat of the palace, an old king suddenly opened his eyes. The old man is the being who carries the title of the most powerful god in this divine realm, Odin Palsen. That scene just now was, a precognitive dream. 
The Supreme God couldn't help but show a hint of fear as he recalled the scenes in his dream. While the precognitive dream had not subsided, Odin immediately used the runes to draw a picture of all the changes he saw in the dream and show it in front of him. In the picture, Midgard, Earth, has turned into a wasteland. A huge monster with a terrifying appearance sleeps on it, and all around it are the embers of destruction and destruction. The entire world is in ruins under the ravages of giant beasts, and huge craters formed by the bombardment of fusion weapons are all over the Earth. Except for that terrifying monster, there is no trace of life on the planet, only death and silence echoing between heaven and earth. What about the Sorcerer Supreme? Could it be that even he? While Odin was thinking, an angry and roaring voice came along with Bifrost. Odin naturally recognized that figure, that was his child, Thor, Thor Odinson. The divine thunder flying all over the sky accompanied Mjolnir as he bombarded the giant beast with overwhelming force. However, such a powerful attack could not even make the giant beast take half a step back. On the contrary, those thunder and lightning gave it a new ability. Under Thor's disbelieving gaze, Mjolnir escaped from his control and turned into the opponent's weapon. The artifact called, Mjolnir, changed hands so easily. This scene caused Odin to fall into a long silence. The restriction on Mjolnir was set by him himself and he knew better than anyone how difficult it was to seize Mjolnir directly from Thor. But the other party did it so easily, which means that its strength is even higher than Odin. What exactly is that? When did such a powerful existence appear in Midgard? Odin frowned, recalling all the powerful races in the universe he had met. But still couldn't find any information about the monster. The scene on the screen continues. The monster that captured Mjolnir seemed to have gotten a handy toy. It controlled Mjolnir and bombarded him everywhere. In an instant, the entire land was shrouded in thunderclouds, and thunder roared across the sky, like a scene of doomsday. After playing for a while, the monster seemed to be tired of it, and it slowly turned its head to look at Thor. Suddenly, this proud Protoss even felt his hair stand on end. At that moment, the shadow of death completely surrounded Thor, stopping him in place, unable to move. The moment the monster's attack was about to touch Thor, the Bifrost that penetrated the sky and earth bombarded the monster at an unimaginable speed. In an instant, smoke and dust rose everywhere, and the earth shook under the violent impact, eventually forming a circular crater several kilometers in diameter. The giant beast was also bruised and bloody in the horrific bombardment, and its huge body was blasted dozens of meters into the ground. Immediately, before the giant beast could react, Bifrost immediately wrapped Thor and took him back to Asgard. Seeing this scene, Odin breathed a sigh of relief. However, he didn't wait long to relax. The next moment, his expression completely froze. The bloody monster quickly recovered. It roared to the sky angrily, and some strange changes began to appear on its body. Soon, the monster's evolution was completed again, and an unprecedented sense of crisis emerged in Odin's heart. Could it be that? He closely watched the monster's movements in the picture, and had a bad premonition about the other party's next behavior. I saw it condensing endless energy, and suddenly spit out a colorful rainbow light from its mouth. Then, it followed the rainbow light, traveled the distance of the world, and finally arrived at Asgard. The god king's pupils shrank, and a trace of anxiety appeared on his old face for a long time. It's over. The dream the god king of Asgard had was certainly not groundless. For Odin, who possesses the highest divine power, precognitive dreams are actually part of the memories left behind after he glimpsed the future. In other words, if he didn't do anything to interfere, the monster would inevitably appear in Midgard and eventually come to Asgard through the Bifrost. By then, all nine realms will be destroyed by its ravages. Odin's face on the throne was a little pale, as if he had been hit hard like never before. He had had precognitive dreams before, but never as clearly as this one. Because that dream was so real, the battle that happened in the dream even affected Odin in reality. What a terrifying existence that is. Odin sighed. Having led his tribe to conquer the Nine Realms, he has rich combat experience. Through the images in his dream, he easily figured out the ability of the giant beast. The immortality that transcends, death, the power to return attacks twice as much, and the endless energy in its body. It all combines to create an invincible monster. We must find hope to break the situation. 
Since that monster appeared in Midgard, let Thor go to Midgard immediately to investigate and find the fuse that caused all this to happen. The God King quickly made a decision, and he immediately informed Heimdall to find Thor, and then sent him to Earth to find that glimmer of life. What happened in Asgard did not affect the Earth, and only a few people noticed anything was wrong. For example, Ji Zhang, after asking the system, he found out that it was Odin who got the information about Yi Fu from nowhere, thus providing him with a huge amount of shock points. This harvest made Ji Zhang excited, but it also made him a little vigilant. Yi Fu, who can frighten Odin so much, is probably even more terrifying than he expected. If it goes completely berserk, the consequences will be disastrous. It seems that we need to buy more insurance. It would be bad if we lose it. In Ji Zong's original plan, Yi Fu wanted to turn America upside down. The shock points he can gain in this way will reach the sky. But now, God King Odin's overreaction made Ji Zhang wake up from his financial obsession. He finally became alert, this is the Marvel Universe. There are countless weird abilities in this world. If Yi Fu copies them all, wouldn't it be the end? After thinking carefully for a moment, Ji Zong's eyes narrowed. He gritted his teeth and exchanged the shock points he had just gained for a flute of purification one-time use card in the system store. In an instant, a thousand shock points evaporated, making Ji Zhang feel heartbroken. However, after watching the system's introduction to the flute, I felt a little more relaxed. Purification flute The sound played using this flute will convey pure goodwill and purify the negative emotions in the listener's heart. Value. 1000 shock points. I have become a poor man again. I have spent so many resources. Don't let me down, you too. Ji Zong's eyes were deep, staring at the screen in front of him as if penetrating endless space. Houston, 100 meters underground. After Tony's unmanned suit confirmed the existence of the monster Gamora, the Avengers rushed to the scene. Compared to the white sphere with no sign of life, the Avengers believed that the giant beast in front of them, which was dozens of meters tall, was obviously a greater threat. It's unbelievable that such terrifying creatures exist on Earth. Although Hawkeye had lowered his voice as low as possible, it was still difficult to conceal the unspeakable shock in his tone. Captain, what should we do next? Facing this terrifying behemoth not far away, which was more than 10 stories high, Natasha Romanoff, known as Black Widow, didn't know what to do and had no choice but to turn her attention to Steve. Retreat first. Steve sighed, feeling a little helpless. Although he has been injected with Superman serum, his strength is not comparable to the behemoth in front of him. All he can do now is survey the situation at the scene and then go back to formulate a detailed combat plan. He placed several button file-sized detectors nearby, and then took Hawkeye and Natasha Romanoff carefully away from the behemoth's habitat. At the same time, on the S.H.I.E.L.D. space carrier, Tony Stark and Dr. Banner were solemnly calculating the physical data of the giant beast underground. 20,000 tons, 0.40 meters. Tony looked at the data he calculated and couldn't help but feel a little dazed. Such data shocked him. Even the white sphere that was denser than this before could not shock him so much. Because Tony knows very well that there are already some extremely dense and massive celestial bodies in the universe. So the existence of that white sphere, although very surprising, is reasonable. But this one in the picture is a creature. Under the Earth's environment, a height of 40 meters is required to support tens of thousands of tons of weight, which means that the body structure and strength of this monster have completely exceeded the level of human cognition. Tony even suspected that even the most powerful weapon currently available to mankind, the fusion weapon, might not be able to completely kill the giant beast in front of him. An unspeakable palpitating feeling emerged in his heart, making his breathing quicken. Soon, people around him also noticed Stark's abnormal condition. Dr. Banner quickly came over to support him and asked hurriedly, what's wrong with you? Stark didn't speak, he just stared at the picture in front of him, his breathing becoming more rapid. Since the Chidori invasion, he has suffered from very severe anxiety attacks. This symptom was gradually recovering as the New York incident faded away. But today, after seeing the white sphere and the terrifying beast in front of him one after another, the bomb buried deep in his spirit was ignited again. Tony, relax. Dr. Banner quickly poured a glass of water and asked the S.H.I.E.L.D. staff to bring a sedative for Tony to take. 
After a long time, Tony Stark's condition gradually improved. That monster must be killed as soon as possible. His tone was extremely serious, which made others slightly shocked. I'm reporting this to Congress and hope they can send troops over for defense as soon as possible. Nick Fury didn't look much more relaxed than Tony. In his opinion, it may be more difficult to convince the inaction guys in Congress than to kill the monster. Director Nick Fury, do you have anything important to report when you open this emergency message? A white woman asked. Nick Fury's face was as dark as water, and he just transmitted the intelligence that Tony had just analyzed to the projection screen in front of many congressmen. Looking at Fury's unattractive expression, they all fell silent and read the report sent by the other party. So, Director Nick Fury, what do you want us to do? The white woman looked at the black director on the projection screen. Please notify the governor of Texas immediately so he can prepare to evacuate people, Fury replied. Huh, since the Avengers have already been dispatched, there shouldn't be much of a problem, right? The speaker was an Indian male, and his indifferent expression made Nick Fury's face darken even more. You have to know that the monster is 40 meters tall. With such a huge body, even if it doesn't have any special abilities, just rolling around on the ground will cause huge amounts of damage. Only by reminding people to evacuate as soon as possible can the losses be minimized. However, Nick Fury's proposal was not immediately met with approval. This group of high-ranking congressmen are thinking about more, important, things. Director Nick Fury, have you thought about other things? A year ago, we encountered the Chitori invasion. The turmoil caused by that incident has not subsided yet, but you asked us to tell the people that they will have to face suspected attack from unknown monsters. What would you think if you were an ordinary citizen yourself? Fury looked cold. He looked directly at the group of congressional gentlemen and asked, are you still trying to hide the facts now? No, it's difficult to hide such huge amounts of monsters, but we can manipulate the fishing boat to make the results what we want to see. Hearing the other party's answer, Nick Fury almost cursed. Monsters are about to attack the city. Instead of thinking about evacuating people to reduce casualties, you're thinking about how to guide the fishing boats. Forget it, I don't expect you to do anything more. Just prepare the Air Force detachment as much as possible. This monster may be more terrifying than we thought. As soon as he finished speaking, Nick Fury immediately closed the communication, and the holographic image beside him also disappeared. Tony Stark, who had listened to the whole story, looked extremely ugly at this moment. He stood up without saying a word, carried his suitcase and walked out. Prepare your armor immediately. As you wish, Mr. Stark. The golden and red armor quickly covered Tony Stark's whole body. He grabbed Dr. Banner and dived from the aerospace aircraft carrier towards the ground. Wait, Tony, what are you going to do? Dr. Banner, who was suddenly caught in the air, asked in shock. Go meet that big rat for a while. Boom. He accelerated again, tearing a sound barrier in the air, and flew towards the destination at extremely fast speeds. Bruce Banner's expression gradually became, unrecognizable, under the impact of this supersonic speed. This was also thanks to his Hulk blood. Otherwise, an ordinary person would have been unconscious at the moment of acceleration. Seeing Tony and Dr. Banner leaving the helicarrier, Nick Fury sighed. He ordered in a low voice, immediately invade the official website of the Texas state government and send a message to all Houston residents in the name of the state government asking them to take refuge in Houston Central Park immediately. As he spoke, he paused and then spoke again. We also need to assemble all available combat forces of S.H.I.E.L.D. and prepare to fight the enemy. After receiving the order, S.H.I.E.L.D. members immediately got busy. Fury sat on a chair and said with a dejected face, that's all I can do. Dot dot dot. Houston, in a simple apartment. Saxton is enjoying the good time on the weekend. As a programmer, such a rest day is his most comfortable time. Saxton hummed as he turned on the oven. He put the chicken wings he bought home yesterday into the oven to heat, then cut the bread neatly, and finally poured out a glass of warm milk. After doing all this, he sat at the dining table and enjoyed his own meal. At the same time, he took out his mobile phone and swiped the screen to see what big news there was today. There are rumors about the affair between the famous movie stars Robert Jr. and Lyanna. Iron Man Tony Stark announced the establishment of a student aid foundation yesterday. 
While eating bread and browsing the news, Saxton felt that his life was full. As he swallowed the last piece of bread, a crisp notification sounded from his cell phone. Hearing this voice, Saxton frowned slightly. He picked up his phone and casually opened the screen, clicked into the mailbox and read the message he had just received. Dear Mr. Saxton, hello, there may be an earthquake in Houston this afternoon. Please go to Houston Central Park to take shelter. Looking at the messages on his phone, Saxton couldn't help laughing. Earthquakes. When will human science and technology become so advanced that we can predict them? With the current level of science, it is simply impossible to predict geological disasters several hours in advance. This kind of information that is full of errors and omissions is a prank at first sight. Saxton was sure of his thoughts, then put his cell phone under the table and started washing the dishes without a care. After doing all this, he lay on the sofa again and played with his mobile phone boredly. But not long after, he stood up uneasily. An inexplicable restlessness slowly emerged in his heart, followed by an inexplicable uneasiness. Saxton frowned and opened the laptop on the table, then quickly clicked a few times to enter the official website of the city of Houston. As soon as he entered the website, he saw the most eye-catching notice of huge amounts of evacuation on the website. His pupils shrank slightly and his expression gradually became serious. Today is not April Fool's Day. The Houston city government shouldn't make such a joke, right? An idea that made him feel a little ridiculous emerged from his mind. Could it be that this is true? He immediately stood up, packed away the valuables at home, and then drove to the Central Park mentioned in the message. What happened to Saxton is just a microcosm of the hundreds of thousands in Houston. Although there were many people like him who believed the message, more people just regarded it as a prank. It's a pity that you missed your last chance to escape. Ji Zhang in Shenwei space pretended to sigh. Let's start, Gamora, let them see the power of His Highness the Monster. His voice penetrated the barrier of endless space and accurately reached Gamora's ears. This huge beast suddenly opened its eyes and roared from time to time. The moment Gamora woke up from his long sleep, the sirens on the space carrier began to sound frantically. Wow! Gamora stood up and tore the ground apart causing the soil to slip away from its massive body, creating huge amounts of rifts. A random movement of this huge creature will have a huge impact on the surrounding environment. The monitors set up by the Avengers also lost their monitoring targets as the Earth tore apart. The target field of view has been lost, and the space satellite is being converted for observation. An abnormal heat source detected beneath Houston. The abnormal heat is being analyzed. It's awake. A series of reports made Nick Fury's expression darken. There was not enough time for all Houston residents to evacuate in just a few hours, not to mention that the people of America were already very distrustful of the government. There are probably not a few residents who are still staying in the dangerous area. Send the message to all Avengers immediately. Let them delay the monster attack as much as possible to buy time for the residents to evacuate. Nick Fury growled. Unknown magnetic field interference detected, currently unable to communicate with the Avengers. This bad information made Nick Fury's expression become more and more gloomy. He was silent for a while and gave the order again. Order all combat teams to attack immediately. Kill this monster at all costs. Following his order, more than 10 Quinn jets carried on the space carrier immediately entered into combat preparations. Soon, pure white cloud marks appeared in the blue sky which were the tracks left by the fighter plane flight. These fighter planes, which condensed the crystallization of mankind's highest technology, roared across the sky and rushed towards Gamora. On the ground, a deafening roar resounded throughout the entire area. Everyone nearby couldn't help but cover their ears and endure the terrifying sound waves. What's more, under the impact of the huge amounts of sound waves, his eardrums ruptured and he fell into a coma. Steve and others, who had just evacuated from the underground passage, also stopped because of the sudden roar. Bang, 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 the approaching sounds heralded danger. Boom, with a loud noise, Steve clearly saw a building more than 10 meters high being thrown away by an unimaginable force. In the smoke and dust raised by the crash of the building, a huge body could be vaguely seen rising from the ground. Then, what is that? As the smoke gradually dissipated, what came into view was an unimaginably huge behemoth. Roar. 
The giant looked up to the sky and roared, announcing its arrival to the world. The ferocity that had been suppressed for endless years burst out on the day of regaining freedom. With a single sweep of the giant tail, which was more than 10 meters long, it easily swept away the surrounding building debris. The people who saw the giant beast seemed to be frozen in place. Some people wanted to escape, but found that they couldn't move their legs. In extreme fear, they seemed to have lost all their strength and could only wait blankly for death to come. At the moment, a bow and arrow suddenly shot out of the smoke on the ground and struck at the monster with lightning speed. However, this extremely fast bow and arrow in the eyes of ordinary people has no threat at all in the eyes of Gamora. The giant beast just roared, and the sound waves generated by the vibration of the air easily blew the arrow away. However, although this attack failed to harm Gamora at all, it still attracted the attention of this behemoth. With his strong eyesight, Gamora quickly locked onto the direction in which the arrow was flying. Its gaze then moved down, and like a lantern, its eyes locked onto the figure below. There, the man holding a bow and arrow whistled twice provocatively, then he fully loaded his bow again, aimed at the giant beast's eyes, and shot away. The ones who took action were naturally the Avengers. Although communication was interrupted and they could not exchange information in time, they still made the same plan as Nick Fury. Attract Gamora's attention and led it away from the crowd to minimize casualties. As the only person in the three-person team with the ability to attack from a distance, Hawkeye naturally became the target that attracted attention. Just when their seduction plan was about to succeed, the people around them finally came to their senses. The crowd, far less calm than the Avengers, immediately erupted in screams. Suffer it. Steve and others' expressions changed, and they began to feel anxious. Sure enough, people's screams of fear attracted Gamora's attention. It slowly lowered its head, looking at the fearful crowd on the ground like a human looking at ants. From the violent pupils of the giant beast, people can clearly feel the tremors coming from biological instincts. Hey, big rat, look here. At this critical moment, a laser hit Gamora accurately. Immediately, the golden red figure slipped from the sky, and the series of sonic boom clouds behind him revealed the anxiety in the visitor's heart. Sir, your attack failed to penetrate the enemy's defenses. Thousands of degrees of laser energy could not even penetrate the opponent's skin, leaving only a trace of scorch marks that were too subtle to be noticed. Tony was horrified by the defensive power of the giant beast in front of him, but naturally he would not show fear in front of so many people because of his proud personality. Hey, you can actually block Mr. Stark's attack. It seems that your evaluation needs to be raised a little higher. With that said, Iron Man raised his hand again, and a silver beam hit Gamora again. Roar. Although Iron Man's beam did not cause any real damage, it still annoyed Gamora. The giant beast looked up to the sky and roared angrily, then swung its tail towards Iron Man in the sky. Seeing the attack coming, the steel battle suit immediately rose into the air and easily dodged Gamora's attack. It has to be led to a place where there are fewer people. Tony glanced at the ruins below and immediately accelerated towards the area indicated by J.A.R.V.I.S. Come here, big rat. He continued to fire lasers at Gamora while flying. Roar. Gamora immediately followed, and every step it took would crush the ground, causing sand and gravel to fly around. What's even more terrifying is that this giant beast is much more flexible than Tony imagined. Under the, hinder, of such a huge body, it can run faster than the speed of sound. Such huge amounts of existence coupled with the rapid movement beyond the speed of sound, the atmosphere where the giant beast passes is squeezed to an extent visible to the naked eye. The sonic boom caused by the compression of the air barrier exploded ring by ring, and the concussive impact completely destroyed the surrounding buildings. Among them, countless living lives also disappeared along with it. Seeing the tragic scene below, Tony Stark was stunned. Iron Man is on the scene. The enemy's defense far exceeds our analysis, and Iron Man's attack did no harm. It's enraged. It's unbelievable. The monster moves faster than the speed of sound. If it continues to wreak havoc, Houston, no, the entire state of Texas will be doomed. Nick Fury listened to his subordinate's report with a gloomy expression, and couldn't help but tighten his grip on the special communicator in his hand. He was hesitation, whether to reveal that final trump card. As long as the woman who is as dazzling as fixed star is recalled, 
With her power, it should be easy to defeat this giant beast. But since it is a trump card, it must be used at the most critical moment. According to the mysterious man named Ji Zhang, all this is just the beginning of the wave of destruction. Obviously, the appearance of Gamora is just a prelude to the big curtain. I am afraid there will be a greater disaster waiting for them next. If one's strongest combat power is exposed too early, the situation may be even worse than it is now. After thinking for a moment, he finally put away the communicator. Connect to the United Nations communications, I want to have a dialogue with the leaders of the five permanent members. Houston at the moment can be described as a hell on earth. Under the destruction of Gomorrah, this prosperous city has been reduced to ruins. Even the mild-mannered Steve Rogers couldn't help but cursed at the tragic situation in front of him. Even Black Widow and Hawkeye suffered considerable internal injuries from the sonic boom just now. One can imagine how miserable the situation of ordinary people nearby is. In the sky not far away, Tony's expression also completely darkened. J-A-R-V-I-S, haven't the Iron Battle Suit Corps arrived yet? He asked in a low voice. There are still 500 kilometers away, and we expect to arrive in 15 minutes. J-A-R-V-I-S replied meticulously. 15 minutes. By the time they arrive, I'm afraid Houston will be gone. Tony's voice contained a trace of irrepressible anger, keep all unmanned armor running at maximum power. We must get here within five minutes. After saying that, he turned around and dived towards the giant beast behind him. Relying on his agile speed, Tony struggled with Gamora. One side has a speed advantage, but it can't even break through the other side's defense. Although the other side has an advantage in all directions, it is difficult to hit the opponent. Knowing that his attack would have no effect, Tony simply turned off the weapon function and used all energy for acceleration. After once again evading Gamora's attack with his super high mobility, Tony looked at the group of black spots in the distant sky and finally smiled. It's time to counterattack. J-A-R-V-I-S. Turn on all the unmanned armor weapon systems and kill it at all costs. Understood, sir. J-A-R-V-I-S immediately took over the control of all battle suits and calculated the best plan of attack with extremely high computing speed. Immediately, Gamora was surrounded by the steel legions that covered the sky. The weapon system that had released the restrictions immediately activated its maximum firepower, exploding fireworks one after another on the giant beast. Chant. Gamora roared and swept his giant tail in four directions, but was accurately dodged by J-A-R-V-I-S. Finally, Gamora, who was completely angered by these, flies, looked up to the sky and roared. Immediately, terrifying energy began to gather on its giant horns. Sir, we have detected huge energy fluctuations above the monster's head, please retreat immediately. J-A-R-V-I-S quickly reported its findings to Tony. Before he finished speaking, the longhorns on the jaws of the giant beast began to flash with waves of red light. Boom. As the monster shook its head, red light waves instantly covered its surroundings, and each unmanned battle suit turned into balls of flame under the attack of super vibration wave. When Tony Stark was about to be hit, an unmanned armor controlled by J-A-R-V-I-S blocked the fatal attack for him, buying him time to escape. But despite this, the armor on his body was still in pieces under the impact of the super vibration wave turning into a ball of scrap metal. The armor that lost power immediately began to fall under the influence of gravity. F-U-C-K. Tony, who was in trouble, couldn't help but curse. He never thought that this armor he trusted most would eventually become the prison of his death. Am I going to die? Looking at the ground getting closer and closer, Tony couldn't help but feel a little desperate. Forget it, this is fine. Just when he closed his eyes and was about to accept his fate, a sound of thunder woke him up from despair. Hey, you're looking bad right now. The familiar rough voice rang in Tony's ears, which actually moved him a little. Hey, hey, what's your expression? I have a girlfriend, Thor, who arrived in time, joked. He grabbed Tony's armor and brought him safely to the ground. I never thought I would be so happy standing on the ground. Tony shook his head and sighed. Thor rarely answered his words, but instead looked at the giant beast Gamora not far away with a very serious expression. Is that the world-destroying beast that my father said? 
Although it is not as tall as the beasts raised by the ice giants, it feels much more dangerous to me than them. Thor murmured a few words, then looked at Stark beside him and said, you should be okay. I've been fine, Tony replied with a shrug. That's good, then I can go and meet that guy for a while without any worries. After saying that, he hooked his fingers into the leather ring at the end of Mjolnir. Then he began to swing Mjolnir in circles, accumulating power and accelerating. Only a few seconds passed before layers of wind and waves began to roll up on the ground. Thor seized the opportunity to accumulate power in the last circle and swung upwards heavily. His body flew into the sky along with Mjolnir. Every time I see you doing this, I want to ask, are you Thor or the Hammer God? Tony looked at Thor's outrageous flight method and couldn't help but complain. Relying on the excellent physique of the gods, Thor, who was already in the air, still accurately captured Tony's words. I'm definitely Thor. He let out a long roar, changed direction again in the air, and threw it hard towards Gamora. Hit me. The flashing thunder in the sky and Mjolnir bombarded Gamora together. Thunder pierced the sky, pulling out a long, lightning, in the sky. Thor brandished the hammer in his hand and charged towards Gamora with thunderous force. His figure was so fast that before Gamora even had time to react, he was directly hit by Mjolnir, which was flashing with arcs of electricity. Then, boom, an unbelievable thing happened. The Steel Battlesuit Army's previous attack with maximum firepower failed to hurt it at all. But now, the giant beast hit by Mjolnir actually took a few steps back under the attack of the hammer, even staggered because of its unstable center of gravity, and finally fell to the ground. Fung. For the first time, Gamora neighed in pain. But even more painful than that were the survivors nearby. This behemoth weighing 20,000 tons fell to the ground, completely crushing the entire ground. Countless people who had no time to escape instantly fell into the cracks in the ground. They were obviously in danger. However, at this moment, neither Thor nor Gamora noticed the difficult situation of those ordinary people. They simultaneously focused all their attention on the enemy in front of them. The impact just now only overturned it. Thor's expression became serious. He could guarantee that if Loki had been hit by him with the same force just now, he would at least be seriously injured and in a coma. But the giant beast in front of him still suffered no obvious damage. Such a terrifying defense power cannot help but let him not take it seriously. At the same time, Gamora, who climbed up from the ground, wailed a few times and then looked at Thor not far away. It was the first time it felt pain after coming to this world. The figure in front of him made him alert. Gamora roared, then flicked his tail and swept towards Thor with terrifying force. Thor, who was alert to Gamora's actions, reacted immediately. He relied on Superman's physique to jump up and easily dodge Gamora's attack. Then, he swung it and threw Mjolnir hard at Gamora's head. Mjolnir, who broke through the speed of sound in an instant, hit the target with lightning speed. Tisk. The moment Mjolnir hit Gamora, violent thunder sounded along with Gamora's wail. Under the impact of huge amounts of, the huge body of the giant beast was forcibly pushed back hundreds of meters. Boom. As Gamora's body suddenly fell to the ground, smoke and dust suddenly filled the ground below. The compressed air formed air waves, blowing over cars and buildings nearby. Thor made a move with his right hand and fell into the ground. Mjolnir seemed to be pulled by some mysterious force, rose up from the ground, and began to return to the original path at an extremely fast speed. Not long after, this artifact fell into Thor's palm again. Gamora fell to the ground, struggling wildly. A closer look revealed that at this moment, the huge horn on its jaw had broken, and green blood gurgled out from the broken part. Thor is indeed strong. That's right. Gamora is just a D-class monster. It's a bit too hard to deal with Thor. Ji Zhang in the Shenwei space looked at the picture in front of him and analyzed it with interest. However, we cannot let Gamora die here. It has a more important mission to complete. After speaking, he lightly snapped his fingers and gave Gamora an order. The giant beast, struggling in pain, suddenly stopped moving, which made Thor alert again. However, what he never expected was that after the giant beast roared angrily to the sky, it suddenly bent down and began to pull up the ground with force. Is this, does it want to escape? Tony, who was watching the battle, immediately guessed what Gamora was thinking. Thor, 
Stop it. We must not let that monster escape here. Tony couldn't help shouting. Hearing Tony's call, Thor nodded and looked at the giant beast below. In just 10 minutes, a big city like Houston was turned into a pile of ruins. Such huge amounts of destructive power had already made Thor determined to kill the opponent. Once it escapes this time, there may be endless troubles in the future. Thinking of this, Thor immediately manipulated the hammer in his hand and threw it hard towards Gamora who was digging in the ground. However, just as Mjolnir was about to strike Gamora, the behemoth completely went underground and disappeared in full view of everyone. Oh, I almost got hit. Ji Zhang looked at the panel and laughed softly. Monster, Gamora, strength rating, D35%. Special move, super vibration wave. Current status, injured 37%. Estimated full response time, 533 minutes. This is, Ji Zhang looked at the percentage sign behind the strength rating and nodded thoughtfully. Could it be that Gamora's strength has been improved after the battle just now? Hearing Ji Zong's whisper, the system immediately came out and explained. Every time a monster goes through a battle, it will gain a certain level of proficiency based on the result of the battle and the strength of the enemy. When the proficiency is full, a small amount of shock points can be consumed to make the monster evolve. Take this battle as an example. In this battle, the proficiency gained by Gamora is 5% for defeating the Captain of the United States, 5% for defeating Hawkeye. 5% for defeating Black Widow, and 10 for defeating Iron Man, percent, and gain 10% if defeated by Thor. Looking at the data listed in the system, Ji Zhang couldn't help but laugh. Why do you gain the same amount of proficiency from losing to Thor as defeating Iron Man? Are you looking down on Iron Man? The system was silent for a moment, then spoke again, proficiency acquisition is only related to the enemy's strength, and other factors cannot affect proficiency acquisition. The system's answer was indeed consistent with Ji Zong's guess. He nodded and continued to ask. The evolution you just mentioned is to simply let Gamora improve its strength, or is it to let Gamora evolve into X Gamora or Skeleton Gamora? The system explained dutifully, the evolution that occurs after reaching full proficiency can only improve the monster's strength and does not include changes in form. That's it. Hearing the system's answer, Ji Zhang couldn't help but feel a little disappointed. Thinking about it carefully, if the monster form can be evolved so easily, then wouldn't he be able to use Jetan to evolve into Hyperjetan? You must know that the evolution conditions of Hyperjacket are extremely strict. According to the original plot, the evolution formula of Hyperjacket is roughly as follows. Jetan larva plus various monsters including Sophia's Sphere plus Baxter spacecraft plus all life on Earth plus the despair of all mankind equals Hyperjetan. Therefore, it is obviously too much to think about using simple proficiency to replace so many stringent conditions. However, this is not necessarily a good thing. Since proficiency can improve the strength of Gamora, it can also improve the strength of super powerful monsters such as Hyperjetan. If this originally extremely powerful monster evolves again, how powerful will it become? Thinking of this, Ji Zong's heart became hot again. However, if you think about it, you still have to wake up from the dream. If you want to summon powerful monsters, you must obtain more shock points. And the way to get more shock points is of course to cause trouble everywhere. Ji Zhang narrowed his eyes slightly and looked at the ugly looking Avengers on the ruins of Houston, and couldn't help but smile. In less than a day, the news that a giant unknown creature appeared in Houston, Asia, spread throughout the world as Ji Zhang expected. Gamora's size is too huge, and the roar that echoes through the sky when it appears makes it too easy to attract attention. Ordinary people don't need any excellent equipment at all. They only need a mobile phone to take shocking pictures from tall buildings in the distance. After knowing that the news of Gamora's existence could not be concealed, the American government simply gave up the news control. Allow those survivors to be interviewed and even upload improvised videos. Before the regular news media could react, netizens spread the news all over the place. Thanks to this, Ji Zhang gained a lot of shocking points. Hey, congratulations on getting 0.03 shock points from Saxton Hayden. Hey, congratulations on getting 0.05 shock points from Venus Aweer. Hey, congratulations on getting 0.02 shock points from Amy Garcia. Dot dot dot. 
Although the value of shock points provided by these ordinary people is far less than that of superheroes, there are still so many of them. In less than a day, he had gained more than 50,000 shock points. Moreover, this number will continue to increase as the news continues to ferment and spread, and the final result may be at least 10 times more than it is now. Different from Ji Zong's excellent mood at the moment, the atmosphere between the Avengers and the S.H.I.E.L.D. staff on the aerospace carrier was extremely depressed. The devastated ground, scattered limbs, and collapsed and broken walls all made the Avengers feel more guilty. In this disaster named, Behemoth Invasion, the Avengers and S.H.I.E.L.D. worked together to fight, and after paying huge amounts of cost, they successfully fought back the Behemoths. Their heroic actions prevented the giant beast from causing greater damage, which is undoubtedly a matter of great joy to the people. In the face of this sudden disaster, having a team of superheroes protecting us. With a depressed expression, Tony the Pitcher turned off the news report on the projection screen. Every compliment in the news sounded like mockery to his ears. Currently, 3,427 bodies have been found in Houston. 2,731 people are missing, and more than 20,000 people have been injured. Captain Rogers of the United States took the casualty report submitted by the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent and announced these distressing statistics to all Avengers. The most important thing is that it successfully escaped. Thor's expression didn't look very good either. Letting Gamora seize the opportunity to escape was undoubtedly the biggest mistake he made during the battle. If he had been more decisive at that time and killed Gamora with one strike while he was struggling on the ground, he wouldn't have left such huge amounts of hidden dangers. Now that the matter has come to this point, it's useless to be upset. It's better to think about how to find its hiding place. Nick Fury said. After the monster entered the underground, its whereabouts disappeared immediately. Even if S.H.I.E.L.D. used space satellites to conduct a comprehensive scan of the area within 500 kilometers, it could not find any trace of him. Hill agent put the detection data at that time in front of Tony. Although the staff of S.H.I.E.L.D. could not find any clues from it, maybe it would be possible if it were replaced by Tony, a famous genius. Plus the equally talented Dr. Banner. Hill suddenly realized that there seemed to be someone missing here. By the way, where is Dr. Banner? Why didn't you see him? She asked doubtfully. Tony's expression froze, and he spread his hands slightly embarrassed. In order to get to the place where the monster appeared as soon as possible, I accelerated. So, Black Widow looked at Tony. While accelerating, I accidentally lost him. Everyone was speechless for a moment, and the atmosphere became awkward again. Then you have to thank me properly, Mr. Tony. Suddenly, a slightly familiar male voice sounded in everyone's ears. The Avengers quickly turned to look in the direction of the sound. As ripples appeared in the space, the appearance of the visitor was finally revealed to everyone. Seeing the face of the person in front of him, Tony was stunned for a moment, then quickly reacted. You are. Ji Zhang. Thor's expression on the side also changed slightly. In the previous exchange, he also heard about the existence of this mysterious man from his companions. This mysterious visitor who seems to know a lot about monsters may be able to help him find the world-destroying beast mentioned by Father God. Ji Zhang didn't care about the suspicious eyes of everyone. He reached into the divine space with his right hand and pulled out an unconscious man, then threw him to the ground. Bruce. Black Widow immediately exclaimed. Um, where am I? Dr. Banner, who had just woken up, looked around in confusion. Ah yes, that monster. Then he seemed to remember something, suddenly woke up, and finally woke up. How is that monster? Bruce looked at the people around him and asked. However, his question was met with silence. To be honest, your performance makes me a little disappointed. Ji Zhang sat elegantly on a chair nearby and shook his head regretfully, Gamora is just a D-class monster. Its strength is in tide of destruction, can only be regarded as miscellaneous soldiers. Gamora, is this the name of that monster? And the so-called D-class monster, maybe this actually describes its strength. Tony kept the information Ji Zhang, unintentionally, revealed firmly in mind, hoping to get more useful information from him. But such a miscellaneous soldier caused such huge amounts of damage to your civilization, and even managed to escape from your hands. This makes me very doubtful, are you really qualified to accept this trial? Quote. Ji Zhang looked at everyone critically, with a trace of pity on his face. 
Such expressions made the Avengers feel very uncomfortable, as if they were being slighted and annoyed. But they were all very aware of the current situation, so they could only suppress their unhappiness and hope to get more information from Ji Zhang. Mr. Ji Zhang, what exactly is the tide of destruction you are talking about? And why do you know so much about monsters? Nick Fury asked in a deep voice. Although your tone makes me a little unhappy, I'm quite open-minded, so I don't care about it. Ji Zhang smiled. Anyway, you are not the first person to speak to me in this tone, and this is not the first Earth to be targeted by the tide of destruction. He said it in an understatement that made everyone in the Avengers tremble. Isn't it the first Earth targeted by the tide of destruction? Tony heard what Ji Zhang said and reacted immediately. You mean, you come from a parallel world? His tone was a little unbelievable. For a genius scientist like Tony, the parallel world conjecture is just a conjecture after all, and whether it actually exists is still open to question. But Nick Fury is different. Because of some past experiences, he knows that this is not just a theoretical conjecture, but a real thing. Ji Zhang easily noticed the unnatural look on Nick Fury's expression, and he chuckled in his heart. Appropriate truth will make people believe his lies more fully. The conclusion drawn by the other party's own reasoning is naturally more convincing than other people's words. You have to use this trick to deal with such a wary old slicker. Just as Nick Fury began to think about Ji Zhang's true identity, others interrupted his thinking. Parallel world, what is that? The person who asked this question was naturally an old man from the 1940s, Steve Rogers. Dr. Banner explained, to put it simply, for example, if you, Captain, had returned safely, many things would have become completely different from what they are now, and that world would be a parallel world to us. Steve couldn't help but feel a little sad when he heard this. He had been sleeping for 60 years, and when he awakened, it felt like a lifetime ago. My former lover has long since married into a wife, with children and grandchildren, and my former friends have long since aged and turned into dust. And he was like a poor man abandoned by the whole world, who could only force himself not to recall the past events that were a foregone conclusion. It would be great if there really was such a world. He murmured softly, but after a moment, he gathered his emotions and regained his original determination. Hearing Steve's muttering, Ji Zhang said pointedly, how do you know that there is no such world? After hearing what Ji Zhang said, Steve frowned and was about to ask, but heard Ji Zhang change the topic to other aspects. Okay, let's get back to business. Although your performance yesterday was really unsightly, I am already tired of seeing the beauty of the world's destruction. A cup of hot coffee appeared in Ji Zhang's hand. He took a sip, then looked at the Avengers and continued. This time, just think of it as an act of kindness on my part to provide you with some information. Ji Zhang said, snapping his fingers, and the projection screen that Tony had previously turned off was turned on again. Everyone couldn't help but notice that on the projection screen was the monster that wreaked havoc in Houston yesterday. The ancient monster Gamora is a native creature on the Earth. It is 40 meters tall and weighs 20,000 tons. It is a survivor of the dinosaur era. The reason why it woke up this time is probably because it instinctively felt the presence of if. It's dangerous. Tony looked at Ji Zhang with some doubt, Earth's native organisms. But it shouldn't appear on the Earth at all. According to common biological knowledge, such huge amounts of individuals can only live in the ocean. Once they appear on land, there its weight can crush you to death. Ji Zhang glanced at him and said seriously, this is not something you can deny if you don't believe it. As a scientific researcher, you should understand what it means to seek truth from facts, right? Quote dot 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 quote. After a moment of silence, Stark spoke again, existence is reasonable. Maybe what you said is right. Nick Fury interjected. More than that, I want to know what you mean by if. It can make even the powerful monster Gamora feel in danger. This existence named if is definitely a big trouble. Nick Fury instinctively does not want to provoke such existence, but as S.H.I.E.L.D. director, he has to find out these hidden threats. It is a mirror that can reflect everyone's heart. Ji Zhang smiled mysteriously. Mirror. Thor's expression tightened, and he recalled what Odin said about the monster's ability, immortality, return of attacks, and endless energy. Among them, its most troublesome ability is that it can easily copy the enemy's attack and then return it with stronger power. 
Isn't this just like the mirror Ji Zhang said? Could it be that if is the world destroying beast that Father God said? Thinking of this, he quickly asked, This guest from another world, can you reveal more information about IF? As long as you are willing, you can gain the friendship of all Asgardians. If, sorry, I can't say much. It is the first trial you will face. Only by, defeating, it can your world have hope of continuing to exist. Ji Zong's expression was serious, making everyone nervous. Definitely, so that your loss will not be so ugly, I have also prepared a gift for you. He snapped his fingers again, and the image of Gamora in the projected screen suddenly disappeared, replaced by a mysterious website. Is this? Tony looked at Ji Zhang doubtfully. I'm not a nanny. It's up to you to explore the specific function yourself. As he spoke, Ji Zhang's figure began to enter a state of divine power and gradually disappeared in front of everyone. Wait, about IF. Before Thor had time to finish, he found that Ji Zhang's figure had completely left. He had no choice but to put down his hands dejectedly, looked at the other Avengers members, and asked them about the news about if. Tony rubbed his chin and guessed, if my guess is correct, the white sphere that appeared in Manhattan yesterday is probably the IF that Ji Zhang said. Take me there immediately. If if is really the world-destroying beast mentioned by Father God, then we must destroy it as soon as possible. Steve on the side said, the beast that destroys the world. Thor, Maybe you should explain it to us carefully. Take me there first, and I will explain the reasons to you on the way. Steve and Tony looked at each other, exchanged opinions, and then made a decision. Then, Tony and Thor and I will go to Manhattan, D.C. Barton and Natasha Romanoff will recover first. As for Banner, you. Steve was about to say something. Thor on the side could not help but tremble. If IF was really the world-destroying beast, then it must have the ability to copy. Once it is allowed to copy the power of the Hulk, the consequences will be disastrous. So Thor quickly said, Banner should stay on the ship too. Although he didn't know why Thor said this, Steve finally nodded and said to Banner apologetically. In that case, Banner, you should rest on the ship for a while. Dr. Banner also nodded in understanding and said, I can just stay here and study the website left by Mr. Ji Zhang to see what wonderful functions it has. Okay, let's go and come back. With that, the three of them boarded a Quinn jet and began flying towards Manhattan, DC. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support my channel.